just to just to do a quick relationship thing. So oh, bad relate another bad relationship thing. Mm. Um, this story that I said you guys earlier is, is interesting. Um, we haven't did, we haven't did a, like relationship stuff in a while, but we're back. You know, some people need help. <laughs> um, the title goes: uh, My wife uh, left our son, and I. Actually, I'll just say the age, cause, mm. but it, this could be vice versa too. That's what that's what I. Mm. So I'll just say for this story in particular, my wife, twenty five F, left our son and I, thirty four M, for the fourth time. What do you think the course of action should be? So let me just quickly give mm. you a tidbit. Hey everyone, my wife left my uh, our son, and I just last night, and this is the fourth time within the last two years. Okay. We've been married for six years. I don't really know where to begin, but I guess I'll start from the beginning of when the issue started. About two years ago, my wife started to change. It was very subtle, but she began to cut people off or cut off people, including her own mother and siblings. Oh, she started to claim she was an independent woman and didn't need anyone as she began hanging out with her co-worker female often and showing up at home five to six hours after work, mm. usually drunk. Ooh, okay, mm. that's, that's hyper disrespectful stuff. Um, after I confronted her about not being there and causing me to do all the the housework, after I got off work, she got defensive and left to stay the night at her co-worker's house mm. and showed back up two days later without saying sorry. Mm. Uh, on the second occurrence, she just randomly started bringing up the past while we were talking about how life was going well and we could pay off our mortgage loan in two years. She started to break out of nowhere and brought up her past about how she was, geez, how she was a... Uh, E essay, extreme es extreme essay, at 13 years old by her guidance counselor. Oh, geez, that's uh, that's really sad. Mm. Um, how her mother and siblings abused her, and how she had nobody. I conf I confronted her or conformed to her. Mm. Uh, she pushed me away, and no matter what I said to calm things down, she twisted everything I said to make it sound like I was attacking her. She mm. then stormed off without even wearing shoes and grabbing her phone and went to the ER at midnight. Oh, geez, well. Mm. She came back three days later after staying at an old friend's. Staying at a... Stay. Mm. Okay, afterwards, she started counseling, which is... Okay, that's a good thing. And got on medications and was diagnosed with CPTSD. I didn't know there was a... Okay. And bipolar depression. Mm. Um, geez, for those who want to read the story, it, it continues going, but... I just want to get to his conclusion. Um, his last paragraph. Sorry, I guess I'm rambling uh, at this point, but I had to get that off my chest before the shell shock wears off. Uh, thank you for all your time and appreciation. So he's, he's thanking people to read. The fourth time. Wow. That's so the third time. So now she's been admitted, and she is on a prescription. Right. But what was the fourth like? Now, okay, since okay, we gotta get we gotta dig more details now. Sure. After the the C PTSD, yeah. Um, on the third occurrence, it was Christmas Eve, so that was the third time. Hmm. Um, just to skip through, everything was going well. Uh, bringing up her past, which that's is basically a trauma, right? Mm hmm. Uh, she went off on his mother. Uh, she stormed back to the ER. Hmm. Uh, spent five days there, came back. On the last occurrence, so that's the fourth time now, mm -hmm. uh, came home drunk, uh, looking to, for a fight, baited the the person into attacking her, um, just freak outs, crying, uh, admitted to the ER again, stayed mm -hmm. for a week. Mm -hmm. um, he called her to reassure, ask her if she was doing well. Um blocked his number okay and then he's just explaining the, her origins uh when he met her she was unhoused homeless mm. so that's um that's rough and did everything or did anything it took to get by and hung around a lot of unsavory types because uh, she just didn't care and lived day to day not caring what happened so geez wow from what I'm getting from like uh, this quick thing, not so quick thing. Now it seems like the whatever she went through, yeah, it's like starting to like yeah, affect like her, unravel. Her, yeah, 
I mean, that's how the mind works, you know? Sometimes people don't even realize what triggers them. And then it's like an onset downward spiral for them. Like, like you yeah. know? And you, wherever he met her at whatever state that she was in, it seems like she was already in a state where she needed help. Yeah. Um, how many kids does he have? One. They have one. They have uh, the son together. Yeah. Jeez. And who knows? Maybe she stopped drinking. And then having drinks again probably started just it. Boom! Just this. Yeah, you know, um, maybe just maybe something was said at work, and that realization when she was there talking to her coworker, that coworker was the only person who could provide comfort for her, but that comfort was very like short lived, and it kind of still kind of drove her into this space of like neuroticism, right? Where it's like the thoughts are louder than the actual reality and present moment, right? Ooh, that's a scary thing that you just said. Like, when you're when it's, like, your thoughts are so loud that it's just, like... Yeah. That's usually... That, is, that, is, that seems more That's a terrifying thing, like... Reality, yeah. Jeez. Right? And then, you know, like, I'm just... I'm just thinking, like, there's so much happening. Like, definitely it's a mental health thing. And, you know, like, I feel bad for him because... Maybe he didn't even know or could foresee that that was going to happen as a result. You know, especially if yeah. he was thinking that she was so resilient and she had done so well with coping. So if she was giving that, like, she's coping for so long, maybe this is also a part of her nervous breakdown where it's like she doesn't want to do this anymore. Ooh. Okay. Oh, no. And it's sad. It's sad I predicted this too, but. So, okay, regarding where they met, right? Mm. Um, yeah, like, he, he really, like, uh, nurtured her, got her, like, back on... Her feet. Her feet. Mm -hmm. But what happened is, like, I guess when you want to improve in life, you have to cut old people off. Because mm. what started this, I just read it, she got in contact with an old person when she was in the, the streets like that. Mm. And then right, that's the main issue. And, that, and when that happened, boom. Mm. And that person was a user. Mm. So that's it's it's weird how I, it's weird how I said um in earlier when I read the story title that caught my eye I said sadly that's a drug thing mm. and mm -hmm. sadly I was right mm. I'm, well as they say you know bad company breeds uh, what is it something breeds familiar airy breeds good bad character yeah or like breeds bad character or something like that right. yeah that's a jeez so it's like. Sometimes that's what it is. And it's, that's actually one of the hardest things because for somebody in that state, it's definitely, it brings joy. There's a space of euphoria and escapism that it offers. That it's like all your pain, your grievances, your problems, your responsibilities are let go. And at that point, it's like, it's the best feeling you could ever feel, right? And oftentimes a lot of people that is what they say that they're chasing. They're chasing that level of like euphoria, the escapism, the ability to just feel like nothing in this world is bothering them or affecting them, or that they have to question or think very hard about finding a solution to their problem. Because there's just some problems that, you know, you need assistance and somebody else has to just be at the right time, right place, or have the ability to even give you the help that you need. Right. Right. And it's not, not substances. So it's like, that's rough. I'm going to share a quick story. Ooh, this is a dark story for me. So me and someone in grade eight, um, one day, I can't remember if he explained to me before or after. I'm, I'm going to try to remember this. But he explained to me before, like, something happened where uh his relative his mother like would take things in the house and sell them mm. and I, he didn't explain the full story why mm. one day at lunchtime we were like in the the area right mm -hmm. in our in our, car, our courtyard our old our old uh, middle school mm. and then i seen his mother they're exchanging grievances but i noticed there was like a distance between them standing like they'll they, they hug it out and then it was just like they'll slowly back away from each other mm. So I'm just, I'm just there just watching. Yeah, I can remember too. It's like mm -hmm. they're standing right there. Mm -hmm. and I'm just watching like their interaction. 
and then he starts tearing up. Mm. Like he starts going like this and kind of like, I said, oh shoot. Mm -hmm. And then his mom's like, his mom's like, well, I'm gone. So she just goes away. Mm -hmm. And then he walks back to me just kind of doing this. And I was like, what happened? He's like, as old, you know, it was, it was hard for him to explain it too. Like it's, it was painful to explain it. But then mm -hmm. when I asked him, so how come, like, what about, what about, like, what happened to your video games? And stuff like that? And he said, well, that's, what do you think she sold it for? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I didn't, oh, I don't remember the story now. I should ask him how his mom's doing. Mm. I mean, it's, it's definitely Tell one of those me. things. I mean, like I definitely have an experience with somebody um, and I didn't know them, but he, he actually came to my workplace cause you know, where I work is a public service area. Right. Um, and he was somebody who would come to my workplace intoxicated. And of course that's not allowed. It's not permitted on the grounds. Right. So one day I just made a conversation with him and I was like, like, why are you doing this? Like, you know, you're a good looking guy. You're this, you're that, you know? And he was like probably a middle-aged white man. Right. And I was just like, you know, you're a beautiful guy, this, that, and the third, like, you know? And from that day, he just spilled his whole, like, world to me and everything. And then when he came back to the library, he wasn't intoxicated. And oh, he okay. kept coming back to the library just having conversations with me. Right. I didn't show up for one day. And this man came back to the library drunk as a skunk. And oh. he looked at me and he was like, where were you? Like, there's just sometimes there's a little dependency. I think he, because he was so lonely, that's the reason why he drank. So he drank his loneliness away. Oh, wow. So that that's... occupied his time. And it just goes back to like, sometimes some people just need a little help. You know, I felt like that was what it is. His loneliness was he needed some conversation. Wow. Yeah. But it's mm. those vices, man. Sometimes, and that's the thing. It's those vices because... I had an issue with one of my virgins, like, little did the, the thing about it, like, I was young. I didn't know how to help the guy. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? So when I found out, like, he was on something, I was like, okay. The first thing that came to my mind was like, yo, and me and my virgins that were trying to help him was to get him out of that area. Mm. But then as one of those things you realize it's like literally, I can help you, but bro. Like, you disappeared, bro. Like, mm. that was the thing. It, like, it was like we were helping him, but he didn't like where he was. And because he's his own person, he literally just disappeared. Mm. And then, like, I didn't know where he went. I haven't heard from him since. That's... Like, and it's just like, you know, I've heard different things, but I don't know how true it is. But it's like, bro, like, literally, we we're trying to help you. Mm. But I don't know if you couldn't see it due to everything. I don't know if, like, you were just laced to the point that, the, the like, the brain was just out, like, mm. out of, you know what I mean? Mm. But like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know, still. Because they do, they, they do say, like, some of those, like, um, like, substances, like, they rewire your brain. Like, they re... Yeah. Like, and I mean, it's the dopamine levels, right? Yeah. Like, when you get that rush, that sensation, like I said, the euphoria... You feel that level of like, oh my gosh, this bliss. Like, if this is the only thing that's giving you joy now, that's essentially what you're going to go to now. Like, you know, when people talk about, oh, my passions give me joy or being in spaces in a certain way gives me joy or this, that, and the third gives me joy. It's like, unfortunately, especially if you've been, um, if you've been taking it or introduced to it from a very young age, you don't get to experience a lot of things that can possibly give you joy that this thing, this substance is now the only thing that is giving you joy and explicitly giving you the rush of dopamine or, you know, eliciting these things. And then your fall down, you know, when you're having to cope with um, everything else, that draws back and it makes you feel even worse than when you're actually up there. So then you just, that's what I'm saying, like those people just continue to chase the high. They chase it until it's like, okay, I can manage. Like, right. Yeah. That's a, hey man, for the advice is just, yeah, you gotta, she has to do therapy, continue, she has to continue with therapy, counseling well, and everything. One thing I could definitely say, I, I appreciate her for actually being able to find ER. 
well that is one thing because yeah. then that means that there's a little bit of like internal dialogue that's happening and she's definitely fighting herself where it's like it's get, it gets to a point where it's too much and she has to like admit herself into the er right and be there for a while that's what it is yeah so you know it's one of those you extend your prayers that's what it is yeah 